The movie begins with a rescue pod docking at the UJS spacecraft. This pod carries survivors from a ship explosion that has been adrift in space for nearly a month. Commander Franklin and his crew were supposed to be among the survivors. However, upon examination, only Lieutenant Miller is found inside the pod, unconscious and weak, with the interior in disarray and strange stains present. Captain Canelo urgently calls for Dr. Alana to assist Miller. Upon waking, Canelo questions why Miller is in the capsule intended for Commander Franklin and his crew. Franklin, being Canelo's subordinate, causes concern due to his absence. Unfortunately, Miller is too weak to provide an explanation. Canelo then requests Alana to utilize a memory reading device known as a memo to uncover the events. In this futuristic world, doctors have access to Afar glasses, a device that scans the brain for memories. However, the accuracy of such devices may be compromised, especially if the patient's memory is disturbed. It all started with the contamination of Earth's atmosphere, turning it into a polluted and toxic mess, causing global havoc. Society underwent a stark division into two strata, citizens and non-citizens. Citizens encompassing the affluent, educated, influential, and often corrupt authorities resided within colossal protective domes. Meanwhile, non-citizens relegated to the lower class struggled outside these domes, battling to survive amidst the polluted air. Moreover, citizens consistently belittled non-citizens, branding them as troublemakers and inconsequential entities. This societal schism fueled conflicts that ravaged the populace. The climax arrived with the eruption of the Yellowstone volcano, posing a dire threat of pushing Earth into another ice age. To evade this perilous fate, the world government launched migration and colonization initiatives aiming to colonize planets beyond Earth. In the year 2151, a space expedition sets off for a new planet aboard a spacecraft known as UJS, also called Sean. This spacecraft stands out because it can use dark energy to travel as fast as lead, significantly reducing travel time. Captain O'Date leads this groundbreaking mission, accompanied by Lee, a technician, Miller, a lieutenant, and Langdon, the pilot who crafted the spacecraft's navigation. They are joined by citizens chosen for the first colonization of the new planet. However, surprise strikes the crew when they discover that Lieutenant Miller is a non-citizen. It's unusual, as non-citizens are often considered unimportant and aren't given significant roles. Roles. Crew members distinguish between citizens and non-citizens with initials on their sleeves. Even Leem suggests that Miller doesn't deserve the lieutenant role and should do cleaning work instead. Despite these prejudices, Captain O'Date emphasizes equality among all crew members. He personally trained Miller and points out that many non-citizens hold crucial positions on the ship. An hour later, they come across an asteroid field. Miller suggests taking manual control to navigate through it safely, but Langdon insists on sticking to the system he designed, believing it to be more effective than human control. They opt to remain in automatic control mode. Suddenly, Miller feels unwell, prompting the captain to advise her to visit the health room. While in the corridor, Miller considers taking a pill, but changes her mind. Shortly after, Dr. Myers discovers that Miller is pregnant despite using contraception. They briefly acknowledge the situation and he prescribes some vitamins. Not long after, the ship experiences a powerful jolt. Miller hurries back to the bridge and realizes that the navigation system couldn't avoid the asteroid field as anticipated. The collision damages the ship's hull and results in system paralysis. Evacuation protocols are activated and rescue caps begin to depart, leaving Miller and a few others stranded on the bridge. In the hallway, Thompson, a crew member, finds himself unable to enter a capsule due to his non-citizen status, despite available space. He must locate another capsule. Eventually, he encounters Miller, Myers, and Lee on the upper floor. Regrettably, they're unable to access the capsule designated for ship officers. Shortly thereafter, Commander Franklin arrives to open the door. However, he permits only Lee to enter, citing the citizenship status of the others. Suddenly, a powerful jolt throws them all inside. Miller takes charge and launches the capsule just before the spacecraft explodes. Despite surviving the explosion, they discover malfunctioning communication and navigation systems. Fortunately, the food dispenser remains functional, providing sustenance every 24 hours. Miller introduces herself as the ship's lieutenant and navigation manager, but Franklin disregards her position due to her citizenship.
citizenship status. He turns to Lee for information on their location and safety, but Lee confesses that navigation isn't his area of expertise. Miller details the challenges they face as the capsule's slow speed hinders accurate location determination, exacerbated by a malfunctioning navigation system. Despite these setbacks, she proposes a solution, charting an alternate route and gradually adjusting the trajectory to rejoin the main path of the UJS spacecraft. To execute this plan, they must engage the thrusters fully, albeit at the cost of draining the life support system's power. Lee, initially hesitant, eventually agrees, recognizing the potential modifications to the thrusters. However, this decision comes with a trade-off, depleting their oxygen reserves. The capsule, designed for a 40-day supply for five passengers, now only holds enough oxygen for the next 22 days due to sustained damage. Utilizing full thrust will further diminish the oxygen reserves by seven days, leaving them with a scant 15 days. Franklin, however, opposes the plan, deeming it too risky. His concerns center on the potential of getting lost, particularly with the navigation system offline. Instead, he advocates for staying put and awaiting the arrival of the rescue team. While taking a break, Thompson and Miller rendezvous secretly, concealing their romantic involvement in the child Miller carries, a symbol of their union. However, Thompson wrestles with uncertainty about the viability of their relationship, given Miller's elevated status as a lieutenant compared to his humble occupation as a chicken farmer on the new planet. Meanwhile, chaos grips Earth as natural calamities intensify, leading to the collapse of major cities and the rise of rebel factions. With Earth's destruction looming, Miller focuses on repairing Repairing the communication system. She enlists Lee's help in constructing a Doppler radio device designed to track celestial objects by emitting signal waves akin to sonar on submarines. Despite its primitive nature, the Doppler radio offers a lifeline for the crew's survival. After hours of effort, they detect a blip on the radar that could signify another rescue capsule. However, Franklin remains skeptical, fearing it may be asteroid debris or a spacecraft, which could jeopardize their already diminished life support power. Lee confirms that the object is approaching their path, but he notes that the oxygen supply is lower than anticipated. Despite the uncertainty of waiting for the rescue team, they opt to explore the object. Reluctantly, Franklin agrees, but emphasizes to Miller the potential risk to her life if the endeavor proves fruitless. Shortly afterward, they adjust the thrusters and set course for the object. During the journey, Myers, aware of Miller's pregnancy, selflessly offers his meal ration to her. While he suggests informing the crew, Miller opts to keep it confidential to maintain focus on the mission. However, upon arrival, the object disappears from the radar. Thompson defends the decision to investigate, believing it's preferable to passively waiting for death. Suddenly, their capsule collides with another rescue capsule. However, upon closer examination, the second capsule appears damaged and devoid of signs of life. In the present, Alana uncovers alternative memories on the memo device, a result of Miller's reluctance to share her memories. This anomaly raises suspicions about the accuracy of the memories recorded, casting doubt on their reliability. Back in space, Franklin assigns Miller the task of inspecting the damaged capsule for survivors and salvageable items, while Lee remains behind to operate their capsule. Shortly after, Miller and Thompson embark on their mission to the damaged capsule. Thompson plans to retrieve the communication antenna while Miller explores the interior. With only 30 minutes available, they proceed cautiously. Inside the damaged capsule, Miller discovers a disheveled room and an unexpected incubator, an anomaly for a rescue capsule. Soon after, Miller stumbles upon the body of a crew member and immediately alerts Lee and the rest of the crew. Meanwhile, Thompson successfully removes the communication antenna Antenna. However, he notices movement nearby, assuming it's Miller. Inside the damaged capsule, Miller inadvertently releases oxygen into space due to a system error while investigating the corpse. Suddenly, she is attacked by a strange creature. Thompson hears her cries for help and rushes to her aid, bringing her back to their capsule. He then proceeds to install the communication antenna. Inside their capsule, Myers inquires about the situation. Miller suspects that something may be inside the suit or she might be experiencing panic from discovering the corpse. Outside, as Thompson wraps up the installation of the antenna, Miller catches sight of something behind him on the monitor. However, Thompson fails to see anything. Franklin, sensing unease, directs Lee to secure the airlock upon Thompson's return, adhering to protocol to prevent potential contamination. Despite Miller's objections, Franklin insists, 
leading Myers to sedate her before opening the airlock. Upon reviewing Miller's video recording, the crew discovers that the capsule was involved in a biological weapons program. The military had been developing bioweapons, though their true intentions remain shrouded in mystery. Thompson challenges Franklin's decision to seal the airlock. Suspecting that Franklin may be orchestrating a plan to eliminate them one by one to ensure his own survival with ample oxygen now that the antenna is operational and their location is ascertained. Shortly thereafter, the navigation system reactivates, disclosing that the capsule is 20,000 call manometer off the main trajectory. Despite the deviation, they are still progressing in the correct direction. During a break, Mir suggests that Miller should tell everyone about her pregnancy to make things easier. Miller appreciates the kindness of Myers, but decides to keep her pregnancy secret, hoping to have her baby safely on the new planet. As Myers gets ready to rest, a strange alien creature suddenly appears from under the blanket and kills him instantly. Miller quickly runs upstairs to warn the others about the creature's presence. The creature hides in the repair corridor, which gives access to all systems, including food supplies. If they don't deal with it soon, it could be a constant danger to the crew's safety. At the same time, Franklin wakes up and urges them to open Open the door, saying he can help handle the situation. However, Thompson doesn't trust him and is afraid he might make things worse. While Miller looks through her memories using the memo device, they see the alien creature on the screen. The creature, medium-sized with deadly claws, came from the incubator they found earlier. It secretly attached itself to Thompson's suit and got inside the capsule. The incubator, similar to those used by farmers to hatch chicken eggs on the new planet, was repurposed by the military to grow alien organisms. Some creatures accidentally hatched inside the capsule and ended up killing the crew members. Shockingly, they find out that the ship they're on is actually meant for transporting strange biological experiments. Lee figured this out by snooping around in the commander's secret files. The experiments were supposed to mix animal DNA with alien DNA, but it went terribly wrong, creating scary monsters instead. Then they get a message from captain of another ship, UJS-99, saying they can only rescue survivors nearby. But there's a bit of hope. Another ship, UJS-100, will cross their path in 18 days. The captain hopes they have enough oxygen to last until then. Miller suggests using the ship's propulsion system to meet UJS-100 in just 10 days. But Lee warns it might use up vital resources, including oxygen. All of a sudden, the reactor core breaks down and they have to fix it fast or they'll all be in trouble within the next day. Miller and Thompson hurry down to repair it. Luckily, the alien creature doesn't see them, and they fix the power quickly. But without them knowing, Lee opens the door at Franklin's request. Franklin attacks Thompson right away. Thompson tells Miller to hide while he deals with Franklin. Miller asks Lee why he let Franklin out, but before Lee can answer, the creature attacks him. Miller tries to help, but Lee doesn't survive. Soon after, Franklin goes upstairs and aims a weapon at Miller. Before he can shoot, the creature comes out and attacks him, leaving Franklin badly hurt. Meanwhile, Alana watches Miller's memories and wonders why they created such a monster. Miller keeps fighting the creature, but it dodges her attacks and fatally hurts Thompson. Suddenly, Miller's memory stops, leaving everything unresolved. When Alana examines Miller, she finds a strange drug in her pocket. After studying it, she realizes it's medicine for bipolar disorder and dissociative identity disorder. But this drug messes with memories, making people think things happened when they didn't. Miller gets confused between what's real and what's not, filling her head with lots of memories. Alina tries to look at Miller's memories again. Looking back to when Myers was resting, some scary things happen. Suddenly, an alien pops out from under Myers' blanket. Miller grabs a knife and stabs Myers, making a big mess. Then she fights with Lee and accidentally hurts Thompson, too. Even though everything's chaotic, Miller feels sorry and says sorry to Thompson. She hopes they can have a good life together. Thompson, even though he's dying, tells Miller they'll have enough air until help comes for her and her baby. As Alana watched what happened, she thought the alien attack might not be real. Maybe Miller made it up because of her medicine. Alana wasn't sure if Miller did it to hide something she did wrong. It was hard for Alana to decide what to tell Canelo. She picked to tell him about the crew's deaths from the supposed alien attack. She didn't want more people to get hurt after losing four crew members. She hoped Miller could still have her baby safely, but Alana worried that Lee and Franklin might do bad things to stay alive. Months later, their spaceship got to the new planet to start a colony. In the ninth month of her pregnancy, Miller had a healthy baby. This brought new life to the colony. The movie ended with this happy moment as people started a new life on the new planet. The lesson from the story, always check your spaceship before you get on. You never know if you'll find unexpected guests like an alien monster or a sneaky chicken. And with this, the movie comes to an end. Thanks for tuning in, guys.